Excellent. So what have we got here? Dave, what have we Friday well, afternoon. It's not night, because they can see the daylight. Friday, yeah, it's Friday afternoon. And it's, uh, it's the winter. It's, it's <coughs> 2024. January. I've got <coughs> I've got a little <coughs> from your throat. A little dry throat, so should we oh. Well, should we start should. the, uh, the, 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 the proceeds? No be able, no, no be able to see what we're looking at here, but yeah, I suppose we should maybe have a... We'll have a little Johnny Walker, right? Oh, so we're going to explain... It is a bit chilly. We're going to explain that we're a little bit different this Friday. Yeah. Hey, yeah, boy. What are we? Cheers. Cheers. Happy New Year. Happy New, happy happy new, new year. year. Happy New Year. So, well, what Happy New Year, so we figured that we should really go on with some of the past projects. Would you say that's fair to say? Past projects, yes. Current projects. No, this one's definitely a past project. I took this to bits about three years ago. So I had seen a few people mm. commenting that watching the videos was like watching paint dry. Watching paint dry. <laughs> well, <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> you got to listen to the viewers. No, no, there's been a few people out there. And I've, well, I've seen a few videos over the years of people putting paint on. Now, putting paint on is as easy as drinking whiskey. It really is. I don't understand people's big deal with it, big problem with it. So, we'll simply run through what I would say my top tips, facts are. So, that stuff's your friend, right? Etch primer, that's your friend. Etch whether you've got bare aluminium, whether you've got bare catalloy or original paint, it's not your friend if somebody's gave your car a coat of something from B&Q because that will act like paint stripper. But if you can get that to sit on top of your panels, next stage is easy. Good stuff. That, and you can buy that on the old interweb for, I think you get about, or well, the more cans you buy, the cheaper it gets. And you get it down to about £4 a can or something. Aye. And a can does a panel. Yeah. So that's your primer, that's your undercoat. Wet and dry sandpaper, I don't know whether that, has that, that got a name on it? You've got the specs, right it's dry. got a rhino on it. Wet and dry sandpaper. Right, rhino wet. Buy the right wet and dry sandpaper because when you use your first piece of sandpaper on your new car, that's the piece of sandpaper you use when you're doing your final panels. Same piece of sandpaper, because obviously the more you use it, the finer it gets. As the paint job goes on, the finer your sandpaper needs to be. So 240, that's just for rubbing down cattle Far, far too heavy. You want to be starting off with something 600 down to 1,000 grid. These little fellas, if you're just going to rub them on an old trials car, old Scotch oh. Bright, you can't go wrong with them. Basically, rub, rub that over your panels as long as it all goes nice and matte, they're fine. Again, I've no idea what grit they are. They're quite soft feeling those. Bye. Now, the old Tractol, the old Tractol, everybody knows the old Tractol paint. That's your, I'm not going to say it's cheap, but it certainly is not expensive. Tracked all paint. That's what I've used for painting trials cars and they do all Land Rover colours and various other colours as well. And tractor colours, hence the name. Track Tracked all. But this is the new one now. Well, I think that's actually the one. Yep, this is the paint guy man. that I use now. The paint man. In fact, he's actually got a little... That's good stuff. He's got a little... Oh, he's got a little card that you get when you buy a tin of paint. Thanks. Now, don't get me wrong, he's probably going in that, and I'm, don't quote me on this. I wouldn't say he's twice the price of Tractol, but for somebody who's been using paint for a long, long time, the second you open it, it smells like old fashioned sweet paint. It really does. Takes you back to when paint was paint. Not that I'm suggesting it's got harmful stuff in it, but it's probably got harmful stuff in it. But it's still a, it's still a synthetic enamel. It's, it's a coach it's a, enamel. Yeah, it? you have to ask for brushable. This is the key mm. thing here. Brushable, rollable, if that's a word. Brushable paint, brushable coach enamels is what you're after. Yeah. You've then got to go down to your, do not go to B&Q, go to your local Crown, Dulux, whatever centre, your paint centre. These are, the, these are crowned professional rollers. Now I've seen some people on the old interweb. These things, right? These things, well, I'm not even going to suggest what they look like and what they're actually for. Throw them away, right? <laughs> these things, throw them away. They wouldn't be able to see that. That's these the are the that you're after. If it looks like something that the ladies use, a bit you fluffy. don't want it. Yeah, it's a bit too fluffy. <laughs> now this is a minefield though, because, well, I don't so know, like, how do we even get you showing that one? So it has to be tight, 
foam, so it's like a sponge. It's like but, it, but it has to be quite a dense, smooth, yes. tight foam. I don't have a cheap one here. Have I got a cheap one here? No, to be fair, the ones I got to be, you know, Wix, ones I got to Wix, were like that. Yeah, they've got to be smooth, because uh -huh. yeah, the yeah. ones that you can actually see, <clears throat> oh, no. good way to explain it, you get aero bars mm. and you get whisper. You don't want aero bars, you want the whisper. Does that make sense to you? No, the whispers. Whisper's got tiny, tiny, tiny little holes, tiny little oh, holes, much right. denser kind of foam. Right. That makes sense to you? Right, so what have we got? We've got paint, oh, and again, when you're in your paint, your paint center place, ask for a pack of brushes. You'll get a pack of five, six brushes, 10 to 20 quid, don't go to B&Q. Find your local paint supplier, go and see them. Paint man, I'm pretty sure unless you live locally, you have to order online. And it comes in a cardboard box, which I would never ever, ever post a gallon of paint in a cardboard box, but there you go. Oh, you mean the tin? There's a tin inside the cardboard box. I was going to say that. Otherwise, you would go so get leak at the corner. I thought you were saying, <laughs> think like a carton of wine. <laughs> a carton a of wine box. That's yours. That might not be yeah. fixed. Yeah, I've used the same. Tractol. What's the other one? Tecaloid. Tecaloid? Tecaloid's from Tractol, Tractol as well. The Tecaloid is their coach enamel as well. So basically as long as you ask for the brush. Ah, yeah. That, that, that is the key word there. Now there is another thing. Alcohol, right? Now alcohol is your friend. What that name? Pure alcohol. Pure alcohol. Well, I dare say you could use a bit of the old grouse up there, but... Oh, it might be. <laughs> mm, don't know if that would... Now you get... You do get... Uh, tack cloths, which are quite like, tack cloths, I mean it's a good thing, we just don't have any today. So what we have oh. is some alcohol that even Neil wouldn't drink. Some mess. And you basically, nice little clean cloth, and you basically just take off any fingerprints. Right. Do not blow the dust off, because all you will do is you will spit on your door. And then when you go to wash your car a couple of weeks from now, you'll see all these little lines, I wonder, what is that? That's because you've spat on the door. So it's pretty much me just wiping some metal in the spirits. But as you can see, what it does is it just lifts. Oh, let's see that cloth again. What's actually good? What's actually good? So it's good taken about, all the dust off. It's taken all the dust off and any greasy fingerprints, basically. What's, What's good about this time of the year, if there is anything good about this time of the year, is that there's not a lot of... Oh, better put that down now. <laughs> Uh, there's, yeah. not, there's not a lot of... The glasses over there. Glasses over there. <laughs> there's not a lot of dust flying around. Now, there may be a fair bit of hot air comes out of me bank for it, but everything's pretty settled, yeah. Unless you've been maybe sanding down some cataloy or really going to town, most stuff is pretty much on the deck. So does the, damp does the dampness of any... Slight dampness of any effect on this at all? Yes, I'm pretty sure if you read the back of the tin, it'll say that you always apply paint above six degrees or something. Some technical Aye, thing temperature rise, yes. Temperature, Aye, temperature rise. rise, yes. But the thing about, oh, I should maybe check this, but the tecaloid actually moisture helps it set. Oh, well, that must be some fancy. Coach enamels, varnishes is where you see it most. If, it's a, if it dips down below that six degrees, it can bloom. bloom. And you get this basically. Yeah. Like a cloudy effect in your paintwork, you mostly see Aye, it almost, varnish. You don't really see like it so much in. Almost yeah, like you just get like you get shiny bits and flat bits. Aye. Flat bits meaning non-shiny, not flat. So do we really? I'm not really going to go into too much about the, the preparation of the panels, because there's plenty of people on YouTube that do lots and lots of preparation on panels. What I would say, if you're on a Land Rover. All of the fancy blocks and all of that stuff, no good in a Land Rover. They've got curves, even the doors, they all sort of go up and down. Oh, no wet and dry sandpaper, in the hand, go for it, pretty much. But like I say, there's plenty of people preps. It seems to be the top coat that people are scared of, oh. which we are definitely not scared of. So is this the top coat you're doing? So this is top coat. So I've already, basically, I've given these a top coat. And then I've rubbed them down and give them a second top coat. Because two coats, two thin coats, is always better than one coat. Paint is not self-leveling. Even if you put a door line flat, if you've got scratches in it, sand scratches in it, orange peel dimples in it, paint will only mimic what's underneath. It doesn't matter how heavy you put it on, it will not fill the scratches. Yeah, it'll emphasize it as well. It, it does. It, yeah. In fact, paint, make it look worse. 
paint actually draws back from a 90 degree corner. Mm. So if you've got a scratch on a panel and you put paint in it, it doesn't matter how much paint you put in it, when it dries, there'll be no paint down either side of the scratch. That's also the top tip for going down the doors. See when you're sanding down? Get a build up on them and leave them alone because paint will always draw back from a corner. Not actually sure why, but that's how it does. That's what it does. Science so here we go. Now it's as simple as this. This little fella here is the paint brush. This little fella here basically just, just basically slabbers it on like that, right? This is pretty much just your application. So all of a sudden this first part of the door here becomes my little roller tray where you basically just get your roller wet. See, Do not, you need a wet roller. I should have done that kind of previously. So there's a nice wee kind of wet roller in there. Now rivets, rivets now, well, where do we go with this? What order do we put this in? We're going to line, we're going to paint these panels lying flat just because it's easy. But I always stand the panels up because gravity and dust is not your friend. Because gravity, all your panels, all, your, all the dust lands on the panels. And you see, this is not rocket science. You getting this? Definitely not rocket science. Hello, we did actually, saying that, we did actually pick up a little bit of muck that came out of that hole. Which I should have cleaned out. Speed's probably off the essence. You've got to keep paint wet. No dry edges. Got to keep it wet. But you don't try and leave it thick on there. You're, no, you can't you're leave it. You're working that in. You can't leave it thick at all. Some paints actually, the, 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 the track tool, the track tool actually prefers to go on a little thick. If you put it on too thick as well, you get a whole load of bubbles. But you don't really want. What's actually really good about rolling is it almost gives you a little orange peel. Now even your fancy car brands, we're not going to mention any, if you look at their paint jobs, they're like the surface of an orange. Now your roller, as you'll probably notice, has got a round end and it's got a straight end. See? Round end and a straight end. The round end, if you lay off the round end, that's your soft, that's your soft edge. If you lay off the other way, you leave a line. See the line? We don't want the line. The line's not what we want. Go and do that again. So we basically, if you, if, you, if you lay off that way, see the line? See the line? If you lay it off going the other way, it's a soft because it's a curve, see? It's a bit like rolling back your masking tape when you mask something off if you want a soft edge. Another way to look at paint is paint is like a brick wall. If you start off thin at the bottom and you start putting bricks out the way, it wants to run. But if you keep paint nice and smooth, flowing even, it'll not run. The only place paint will run is around a rivet. Now, you get a little reservoir if you like a paint around the rivet because you want to make sure you've got around the rivets. Pretty sure there's a tongue tie, tongue, tongue twister there. Is that a reservoir rivet? around the rivets? A reservoir around the rivets. Run the rugged driscoll or whatever that is. So you make sure that you've not got that little reservoir around your rivets before you stand the panel up. Or if the panel is still on the car, just make sure that you don't have a little reservoir. It's like so also that little crease, that little line along the door there. That's the places that a little reservoir. Now, what we have to do now is Aye, basically just, basically, yeah, along there you'll basically yeah. get a little. Now you've also so got you're to running across that, you're not putting any weight in that roller? No, no, you? basically just allowing the roller, the weight of the roller is what's basically doing the job there. Top coat will always flow out. Which is why I use the, uh, the, why I use the etch primer as an undercoat. Or if you wanted to put two coats on, now the paint man, he does do undercoat but I would just gloss it twice, top coat twice. 
So you're just slapping that all in there. Pretty yeah. much, because it's all well. If I was painting it, you put lines on it and then you bring them together. You bring them together. But basically, a, a roller is just a, a constant stipple, which is the easiest way to put paint on, and it's the easiest way to shift paint around. Also, you can thin paint. Usually when it comes to you from the paint man or, well, any company really, if you find it's a bit heavy, like this is actually a bit heavy today because it's actually cold, I should have had the paint inside. Paint's made from oil, or the paint that we're using is made from oil. So paint is thick on a cold day. So if you want your paint a little bit thinner, rather than thinning it, warm it up. I always remember my old tradesman nipping into the customer's house when she was away out to work, and he put his pot of paint on the cooker. And then we forgot about it. <laughs> and it went on fire. <laughs> That's not ideal. But it's probably, I mean, I would say the less you play with this, the better, the better it will be. I mean, it really will. So what people need to remember is these are old Land Rover doors. I mean, how old are these doors you're painting here? Well, these are actually these are actually repo doors. So these were the, these are the, but they're not, they're not the expensive ones. If I was out doing that again, I would probably buy the galvanized frame ones because I had to take these skins off the frame because the frames had no paint on them. So you've got bare aluminium onto bare steel and we all know what happens with that. So I had to take the skins off, paint the frame two or three times, paint the skin two or three times, then put the skin back on the frame. But they're not, what I'm saying is they're not brand new doors though. No, no, they're not brand new doors. No, no. But this is, we're not, well, I'm not here to say that this is better in any way than getting your car done professionally. What I am saying is, including the brushes, the rollers and the paint, you should be in your garage, with a little bit of effort, you should be in your garage and you should have your car painted to a reasonable, a reasonable standard for under the £100. Whereas, I mean, even a, a basic paint job in a, in a, in a, in a spray booth, but I, I can only assume that they'll start sort of at a thousand pounds. All the way up to, well, sky's the limit really. We all know that there are incredibly expensive paint jobs out there. So roughly how much paint do you need to, to paint a, well, this is a 90. If, you, if you've got a 90 or a Series 3, short wheelbase. a short wheelbase car, if it's in reasonable condition, You'd probably paint it with a litre of paint. A litre of paint would give it two coats. But to be honest, for the difference in the cost between a litre of paint and a two and a half, half gallon in old money, then you're always better with the, you're always better with the, the half gallon. Right, we'll get a wee slabber on here to so go some vertical. Here you can see me using all the grease of my hand, but it's never actually gave me any problems in the past. Right, so vertical, what we are looking for is the seams, the joins, the bits that the roller does not get into. So you basically take the brush along and put the paint in the seams, in the bits that the roller is just not going to get in there. The roller is just never going to get in there. So that's where you start off with putting in your paint. Stick it in all the seams. Now again, if you basically take a panel at a time, you don't have to worry about your, your dry edge coming along. A dry edge on a summer's day with this paint could come along, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes on a warm day, and you're basically not going back to it. So a colder day, I Gives you that wee bit extra time. I've been caught out with that. If you start working it on a warm day, you work it too much, your roller ends up disintegrating and sticking to your panel. Again, that's why you don't want the wrong roller. <laughs> and you can, you can. I mean, I used to, I've, I've applied, I used to paint many boats with two pack. Two pack paint can be rolled on, but you just have to buy the correct rollers for two pack. Otherwise, your roller absolutely disintegrates, like you were just talking about. So there's one thing, one big advantage of painting with a brush. Right, I'll tell you what I think. One big advantage is you don't have to mask everything up. But yes, yes. That's a massive time-saving effort. Work-wise, there's probably about the same amount of work in both. 
But there's there's less time in the masking and there's less time in clean up. Cost wise is is the main one. I mean and if you're set up for spraying, then obviously that's what you do. But your average person can go out, buy a roller, buy a tin of paint, rub their car down, and go for it. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's an old Land Rover. The first thing you're probably going to do, well, at some point you're going to drive it through a hedge and you haven't just spent a thousand pounds on a paint job. I think you probably say that there's more paint goes on. I mean, I would think that I'll probably put twice as much paint on as you would if you were spraying. But as you can see, I mean, there's no great difficulty in this, is there? It's all about getting it on, getting it smooth, before it wants to start going tacky, and then leave it alone. My old tradesman used to tell me, and this goes for many, many things in life, is look after the corners and the middles will look after themselves. And it always makes sense to me. I think it was actually when I was cleaning windies, but... <laughs> if you look after the corners, the middle will look after itself. Now, I'm not that fussed about going in there because, well, it's all been bashed at some point, and the front panel, I'm putting standard 90 panels back on it there, so anyway, so that's what's going on with that. So this old Land Rover came to me about 17 years ago, when it was probably around 10 years old. So it's a 97. So it's probably around the last of the 300 TDIs. And when I got it, it had been upside down. And I got it and I painted it all black, which was the fashion at the time, and it was a nice wee black 90. And that paint lasted on that car for yeah, 15, 16 years. But it was looking a bit tired. A lot of the panels were showing signs of distress. They all had that horrible bubbly stuff. So I basically took a copper wire wheel and a drill and then a grinder, or a brass, a wee, a wee brass brush, basically. Mm. And I dug out all that horrible white stuff, that, that powdery stuff. We got rid of that. Bit of catalloy in there. A wee bit of the H primer, a couple of coats of this. So the, this, these were not good wings. These were definitely not good wings. And it's back to that thing that it doesn't matter how much money you spend on the paint job, when it's aluminium and it's got that horrible stuff in it, it's in it. And if you don't spend a lot of money on the paint job, you can change your, you can change your colour, you can change. So as you can see, we're going for a little sort of a retro look. We're going for a little retro look. So what colour is this? Oh, do, 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 do. I can't remember. This is, this is the russet brown, I think. Can't see the label. Can't see the. I think this is the russet brown. And what's you get the hat the, the russet, just limestone. Limestone. So it's the colours of the A, B registered 110s. But I've done it in the. In the what would be the word? I never liked the 90 because the 90 painted the sides of the hardtop, the same painted the sides of the hardtop brown. Oh, that's right, so it but is. the 110 always looked much, much, much better. So that's why I painted this one with the hardtop. And the door tops, they will be going cream as well. So again, if you get a little bit of confidence in your abilities, you can take your car, your blue 90 into the garage at the weekend and on Monday morning <laughs> it can roll out a red 90 or a green 90 or a whatever 90. I think that's one of the problems that over the years quite a few have done and come back out they've well, not just been a different colour but they've been a different number <laughs> well, I think what, what's quite funny is, is, is that fashion change because everybody wanted to make their old Land Rovers look like new Land Rovers. So for a long time, everybody was taking these old Land Rovers and painting them metallic grey. God, everything got painted metallic grey and silver. And now we're taking, well, newer Land Rovers and making them look a little bit retro, or at least I am. I'm not quite sure if anybody else is. 
Right, we'll just crack on with this one as well whilst we're here. Dinner, whether thank you're... Well, that's handy. I am actually getting a bit dry. I see you're fending yeah. for yourself there with the whiskey there, Neil. Well, the thing is, you're fairly hammering on here. So what we could also have a little discuss I'm not getting much of a chance to. Whether, whether we do more in-garage videos. Oh, to sure we should. Because Neil and I do a little... Neil and I do a little whiskey show every Friday. In fact, we had 75 Fridays last year. <laughs> or was it more than that? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should 80, have... 80 something Fridays last year. <laughs> maybe we should, we should have more Friday mornings in the garage. <laughs> Friday mornings in the garage. We might get something done then. Instead of trying to do the Saturday mornings in the garage, which don't work, you <laughs> see. <laughs> You're yeah. putting me in the mood that I was quite liking the, the patina in mine, but um, you're putting me in the mood that I should be getting it painted. So the patina as well. Now, I have heard people saying that you shouldn't even talk about it because if it's not true patina, you should never fake it. I disagree. So if you then take your wet and dry sandpaper and then understand patina, don't just treat it like a piece of shaggy, shaggy, shabby chic sideboard. Nice. You've got to try and understand patina. You've got to understand the way that the door hinges. You've got to understand just where they wear in general. You take your fine sandpaper, you're wet and dry, always wet, and just thin out your paint. Ah, it's where the, where the muck gets chucked off the tires and where the, the wings catch the, the rain. And if, yeah. if, if you don't want a shiny Land Rover, and I know you can buy satin paint, but satin paint doesn't flow like gloss paint. It, it just doesn't. It, it leaves you a sort of a thick. It just doesn't. So in theory, what you do is you use gloss paint and then you wet and dry it down. And that gives you your, your you age it. You basically just, you just hurry up the, the aging process. Well, we know we should mention just now, when you're talking about patina. So you get guys that, model Land Rovers and they, yeah. add, they add patina to Land Rovers and one of the the biggest mistakes that a lot of them do is they add rust they add rust yes I've seen that <laughs> yeah oh, okay you do get the odd bits of rust in the Land Rover but not, not yeah, usually no, that's not right. usually in the middle of the panel unless you get some there are there were some years that certain panels were made John Crop and Octorada had a Series 3 with a steel hardtop and st steel panels. Oh. I had a Series 1 with not that, an 80, so it wasn't a, that word, we can't say that, M word. It was a, an 86 and it was a steel door and a steel door top. So somewhere along the lines, I don't know whether it was Land Rover that made them or whether somebody else copied them, but you did get some steel parts. Another bit here, say there's a hole in the wing. See if you go over that and if you lean heavy on the roller, it's, it turns into a printer. <laughs> so you'll basically get that shape there, 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 there. Right. So you basically just make sure you don't do that. And if you've got the thinner rollers, that's the kind of thing that, that they do. They leave, it's just like a sponge, it, it leaves your lines, it's just not good. But as you can see, and I know I've been doing it for a while, but uh, it's no rocket science. It's just no difficult. It's just about getting the right so materials. As you, so as you're going on, you start off, you get a bit of, bit of weight behind the roller when you're starting off. Yes, when you're... When but you're, as you're closer right. you get to finishing off, the lighter and lighter that's it. the weight you're putting on there. Until you're basically just using the weight of the roller to make sure that you've taken out any... any now, light. you're always going to get things landing on it. There's always going to be stuff landing on it. What you can do, if you take sort of 2,000 grade sandpaper, the wet and dry, always wet, you can polish all of that lot out with wet and dry sandpaper, you can remove all the little nibs, and then you can get a polishing mop on it and you'll bring it back to a shine. Because shiny paint is shiny paint, even if you flatten. So see like that bonnet there? If you took a polishing mop to that bonnet, it would go back to that. Yeah. But... You're just adding extra But they're Land Rovers. Extra layer. They're Land Rovers, so... We're not going to be getting anywhere. 
So what do you think of the Johnny Walker for a job like this? That's a bit nice. It goes quite well. The mm. Johnny Walker and the smell of the paint just matches perfectly. The actual Land Rover puts me in mind of Stuart's cream of the barley, but I think it's just the colour scheme. So here's here's one they did earlier. The back <laughs> quarter panel. They were done at the tail end of last year, they've got a fair bit of, a fair bit of dust on them now. So they've just been done the same way. Done they've done it exactly the same way. So obviously you can see there's a wee bit of orange peel in this just now, but that'll smooth out as it. Yeah, and if you've got lose some of that, the the track tool bubbles, but again you play with it to you can't just leave big bubbles in it. But the the this if you put this on heavy, it'll bubble. But if you put it on at the right sort of depth, it, it doesn't seem to well. So see there it's heavy. That's not even that, it's not really bubbling. The right roller, the right roller, and the right paint, and it doesn't bubble. Basically, if it's bubbling, you've got the wrong paint and the wrong roller. But the track tool does, the, the bubbles do come out. You have to just have that, again, do a couple of panels, get a bit of faith, find out what it does. See, there is a wee bubbles there, but the time you go back to them and take it out that little bit thinner, they disappear. So this is also going to get the the limestone stripes that the 110 got oh, along the side. Right. Yep. So I'm going to get the 110 County Station wagons Graphic. and, and, and the graphics. No, I'm just going to get the graphics so you can buy them. I was going to get the, the boy Stirling to make them, but you can't buy them, so I'll just buy them and basically take, the, right. take the back door out, <laughs> pretty much. Well, I've got the digital files for the county ones. Yeah, the, the white, the... the well, the, the cream stripes with the, with the wee county written in the back uh -huh. quarter. Yeah, the sort of chevron one. So that's what, that'll be the sort of the finishing touches if we ever get to that stage. But yesterday I got all the seats in it, the seat belts in it. Did you? Yep. Oh, so you have. So the floors are in it. Floors are in. Top tip, do not drop. A reproduction seat belt, or you'll see the inners as they spring out all <laughs> over the floor. Oh, nice. Yeah, brand new seat belt, dropped it on the floor, the end plastic cap pop popped off, and it was like an overwound grandfather cloak oh, as it flang all over the place. So again, I mean, we've got quite a big area here. It is quite a big area here. And basically just keep moving. Just keep it moving. It's, it's not really about the direction, because there's no grain, there's no... It's all about just whatever direction you need to go to get it smooth, to get it even. And you'll start to see it because of the bubbles. You'll start to see which way, where it's deep. See if it's deep. If it's deep, you'll see it because you'll leave bubbles in it. So that's basically just ready for, for laying off now. So again, we've got rivets here and we're on the vertical, so I've painted the bottom of this bonnet the first time around, so I'm not going to bother painting the bottom of it again, or the back of the bonnet. But see, years ago with just a brush, brush if you were coach painting with just a brush, these rivets would just be a problem. But the roller, because the roller stipples, it removes lifts. that little, yeah, it lifts. It lifts it off, eh? But I can't stress more, I mean, it, it, top coat will only mimic what's there. And we're not going to go down the preparation, 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 but top coat will, will not, will not hide anything. As you said earlier, it'll actually just make it look worse. But a lot of the time when you're painting a Land Rover like this, it's really just about freshening it up. It's not, in reality, if you want to use your Land Rover the way it's intended, you, you don't really want to be too precious about it, do you? Well, what we've got here is a, what we've got here is a, a Land Rover that I've had seven years use out of. Now, I've towed my race car, I've towed my trials car, 
We've done tyros with it. It took me to my work. It's actually been my work's van for 16 years. I put a new chassis underneath it. I've done little bits and pieces to it. So that's why you took it apart? That's why I took it apart, because the chassis on it was, well, a disgrace. It was an absolute disgrace. Swiss cheddar cheese. It was terrible. Interestingly enough, it still actually had six months MOT in it. <laughs> but it was absolutely terrible. I'm just quite pleased myself that touch wood I've not walked into anything yet. <laughs> so there you go, that's what, how long has that been? Half an hour? And you managed to paint two doors, two wings, front panel and the bonnet. Yeah, I mean, it really does not take long to paint your car. Maybe it takes you six weeks to get to the stage that it only takes half an hour, but we've only had one dram. So this is your third coat for this? The two on this bonnet. So, well, basically, it's, it's had a... The bonnet hasn't... The bonnet didn't require an undercoat. It was basically just a black bonnet. So that's had two coats of brown. The rest of the panels have all had an H primer, well, catalloy, an H primer, and two coats of top coat. Now, at this time of the year, you really can go back and make sure that everything is as it should be, especially on those vertical surfaces. But I don't know how well you can see that, but you can just tell that that is smooth and even. Now, you definitely get little bits of grit in it, but what you've got to remember is 50 quid paint job. <laughs> <laughs> It's all these things, the more particular you, you can be and the cleaner the environment you can have, then yes, it can, it can all help at the end of the day, but as you say, with this kind of paint, you can buff it back, you can polish it, polish and compound and do what you want, go as far as you want with it. But what you have to remember is, it's old aluminium. Now, the 90s were a little bit better, the aluminium was a little thinner on the little Land Rovers, but the, the 80s, the 80s, in fact there's, one, there's an 80s door line over there, they really did have that, that, that rust, that oxidisation, that white stuff. Now, unless somebody out there has got a cure for it, which I really can't understand, once that's in the aluminium, and it was always in the aluminium, that's the problem, doesn't matter how expensive your paint job is on top of that, that will come, it'll always just keep coming back through. So we've got a little... Oh, your back door here. My back, back doors seem to be the worst. That's an old... That's off an old C plate. I don't know whether to repair it or not. The problem is that the new ones that you buy are absolute junk. They don't even seem to be the right shape. <laughs> no. Well, I don't think they ever were the right shape. Let's make sure the rivets have not got wee reservoirs at them. And that's it. So that's Neil and I in the garage on Still Talk. Excellent. So let us know if you want us to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's no changing wheels, I hate changing <laughs> tyres, so I hate changing tyres. That, that would be a, be a lot of beep, 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 <laughs> beep. <laughs> well, right, Neil, you ready for a wee dram? Well, this will be a... I'll be on the Wonky Willow Workshop one as well. So yes. Maybe drum up here. I was going to mention that. Well, this will be a, a first. This will be a two-channel. Is that two-channel video? <laughs> you? No, I'll do that. That'll do me just now. Because I'll, 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 this will be published Sorry. to. Just, <laughs> oh, dry. This will be published to. We'll try it on the still talk, but we'll also try it on the uh, wonky willow. Well, I'm not sure there's much still talk because there wasn't much whiskey discussion in this one. There wasn't, no, but it's still, it's, there should still be a, you can still have a wee dram while you're doing a bit of work in your car. So the question just we're asking, dram. Them, just a, a wee dram. dram. Yeah, just a wee dram. Well, it all depends on the job as well. Hmm. But we're asking them. As long as you're not going anywhere afterwards. Shall we do any more? We should. Things in the garage. What should we do? Because I've got lots of things that we should be doing in the garage. Yeah. After sitting having a wee drama, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just need to get them finished. No matter so. What did you say? <laughs> Which is totally contrary to what you were saying earlier. Mm. Popped up. 
and it was a Dennis fire engine. And I was thinking of Bad Giant. I thought, he built that flatbed. <laughs> Ola, how cool would that be? A Dennis fire engine, basically leave the sides on, mm -hmm. and you take all the gums out the middle, mm -hmm. and your car fits in the back. Well, the car fits in the back. Aye. All right. So you, Aye. You're going for a car haul, uh -huh. would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aye. <laughs> I've got a 101 someplace that was started off as a car haul, and it's still someplace. That's we definitely we should drag the old 101 into the workshop and just get it because it's just needing titivated. It's just needing little bits and pieces. It's needing a bit of love. A 101. So what's the 101? The 101 is military, forward control, mid 70s, mid to late 70s, I think. Aye. So there, there, was a, there was a time that all these forward controls were quite popular, wasn't there? Because there was Jeep did their forward controls and oh yeah, yeah. Because it's all got to do with to do. It's taxation on yeah. load and length of vehicle. Mm. So basically, somebody realised that if you move the cab forward, you get a lot more load space for your money. In the payload. So the old cab over. It's quite. You have to have to go back into it, but it's got something to do with taxation class. So it's a weight of a vehicle. But somebody realised that we're sitting in the middle of the vehicle and we've only got a little bit at the back. Aye, Whereas aye. if you sit at the front of the vehicle, you've got extra load space. But it's still the same class vehicle. So it's a COE. So a COE, a cab over cab engine. Over engine. Oh well, we'll need so to So we have a cab out. over, yeah, we have a COE. Like we have a cab yeah. over engine. Like we'll, need to bring them yeah, we'll dig that out. Dig that one out. And, and we have a couple of trials cars to fix. I've got my gearbox to sort in the Rupert one. And it's also making another noise, so I'll need to get you out. That's what we could do. We could diagnose the problem in mind. If you think you're going to call me well. into coming into you're about to take a gearbox at you. <laughs> no, I just want to work out where the noise is. <laughs> All right. So I'll sit with the screwdriver as you drive down the street. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to be ahead out the window and see if you can. Yeah, and I'll go, you're right enough, Neil. It's the gearbox. <laughs> I don't know what it's. No, I was out, out the other day there and trundling along and it just. <laughs> Off the front end somewhere. It's definitely coming out of four wheel drive, that's the obvious thing. Oh, so aye, the, aye. the wheel the oh, no, not it's kicking, not it's definitely not no, doing no, that. No. So anyway, it's, it's on it's on trailer under the carport now because the other one's in the garage to fix it now. Or what we could actually do on this Land Rover page is we could just actually stand here, two men in a garage, talking about what we're going to do. Well, that's, that's, that's what everybody that's what else does. does. <laughs> so <laughs> cheers. Right, cheers. We shall go and do a proper Friday night on Stumpop now that the Friday night is coming in.